Now, live from Whitney Media, 1460 WVOX, the Greenberg Report, with Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. You can join in the conversation at 914-636-0110. Now, on 1460 WVOX, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Good morning, uh, Westchester. I'm Paul Feiner. I'm the Greenberg Town Supervisor. And thank you, WVOX, for providing me with this opportunity to chat with you. Today, we're going to be um, talking with an outstanding uh, student at Hastings High School, Gus um, Remsen. And Gus is no stranger to uh, Greenberg um, because I think we honored you at a town board meeting when you were like in sixth grade or something. Yeah, so I won this uh, Martin Luther King Jr. essay contest and uh, Supervisor Finer invited me to come speak at a Greenberg town council meeting. I did that. It was an amazing experience, um, and I'm I'm so happy and so excited to be to be back and talking with them today. And uh, then uh, you showed up at a town board meeting uh, about a week ago. Yes, I did. So um, Supervisor Finer invited me to come back to speak a little bit about my project for science research, which is this awesome class and program that we have at Hastings, and that you'll see in a lot of high schools um, in the sort of Greenberg Westchester area, and as well as across the country. Um, so I've been studying composting, and I received this pretty amazing uh, grant from this organization called the Morjo Foundation uh, that's based in Massachusetts that funds uh, high school environmental science research. So uh, uh, the Enterprise, the Rivertown's newspaper, uh, wrote an article about it. I think Supervisor Finer, you saw that article and invited me to come speak. So I, I got the opportunity to tell the town council a little bit more about my project, my system for um you know, combining composting and agricultural intensification. Um, and yeah, now I'm here to talk a little bit more about it. Great. And I wanted to mention that uh, uh, you've been recognized by the Hastings High School as one of their exceptional um, students. And one of uh, your teachers, I think, Greg Smith, said <laughs> that um, when he honored you, he said something like, um, you, di he, you disagree with him all the time. And yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, that's what um, always encourages um, great education. Yes. So I was I was not expecting uh, to win that social studies book award um, because I uh, have trouble keeping my mouth shut in social studies class. Um, uh, my teacher, Mr. Smith, is incredible. We uh, it was American history this year um, through Syracuse University. So it's SUPA, which is Syracuse University Project Advance. I was in that class. Um, and we'd have some pretty lively debates, uh, me and Mr. Smith, as well as the other students in the class were all awesome. Um, so we'd, you know, especially government stuff, um, we'd have some, some great talks. And I think uh, Mr. Smith appreciated uh, my willingness to, to sort of fight with him a little bit on, you know, whether the New Deal really worked or whether, um, you know, Economic stuff or science stuff. Um, we had a, we had a lot of good talks in that class. I, I had a question because uh, my first campaign manager uh, was Phil Weiser, who's now the Attorney General of Colorado. Yeah, and um, you know, I also remember reading that Hastings has more Nobel Prize winners <laughs> than I think any place in the world. I think they've had like four or five um, Nobel Prize winners. What makes Hastings such a special place where so many students are really smart and it's always been very artsy and educated yeah i mean i think there's sort of a um there's this kind of sentiment of encouraging intellectual curiosity um i think we're a we're a town we're a school community that really um is sort of fostering uh you know respectful disagreement fostering people to sort of go find their own answers um there's so many people that are taking independent studies and so many different things people that are um just trying stuff out sports uh we have a um, was that? Uh, the, the, we have to take a five-minute break now, and then we'll be back, and we'll we'll also be talking about some of your efforts promoting composting. Yes. It, right after uh, this uh, five-minute break, I'm Paul Fina, Greenberg Town Supervisor.
1460 WVOX. Now back to the Greenberg Report on 1460 WVOX. Once again, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Morning, uh, Westchester. I'm Paul Feiner, Greenberg Town Supervisor. My guest is Gus uh, Renzen, who's a Hastings High School um, rising senior, right? Yeah. And um, Gus Renzen uh, uh, earlier this year received a five thousand dollar grant from the Marjot Foundation, and that's a not for profit uh, group that funds high school environmental research uh, projects. And you're um, been a student at uh, Melissa Chandra's two year uh, science research um, uh, program. And could you tell us a little bit how you learned of um, this not for profit? And how you applied, how competitive was it to get the five thousand dollars? So uh, it's a it's a competitive grant. I don't know how many students apply for it. I know um, uh, New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, um, a bunch of states in the east, eastern Northeast have students uh, that can apply for it. Um, but we've had a fantastic track record um, of you know receiving the grant at Hastings High School. I think five students. Um, in Ms. Shandraff's class in the last um, six or seven years, maybe, have uh, received this grant, which is unbelievable. It's, it's incredibly competitive. Um, and it's really thanks to Ms. Shandraff. She uh, is an incredible teacher um, and mentor as well for, for all the students in her science research program. Um, so she, uh, really from the beginning uh, of my project, when I started studying composting, um, decided that I was going to sort of design a composting system and got into the idea of agricultural intensification using the the heat and the carbon dioxide from composting to help grow plants uh, faster and um, to create better uh, plant yields and do that in different um, seasons of the year. She was like, you know, we've got to get you this this Marjo Foundation grant. We're going to, um, you know, we've been thinking about it all year, sort of strategizing. And, um, you know, of course, she's been helping me. She helped me with my application, read it over and sort of her her knowledge and her expertise, um, not just about specific science topics. She, I mean, she is an environmental science teacher, so she's super helpful for me on the science side. But just um, throughout the process of you know, competing in science competitions, I'm applying for grants, uh, just really like doing research, learning research for the first time, reading journal articles. Um, she is such an incredible resource, um, so helpful, and she um, you know has mentored me all the way through it. Uh, Help me get this Marjo Foundation grant, um, and it's it's thanks to her that that, that I have it, and that so many uh, Hastings students um, before me have gotten it, and I'm expecting that so many afterwards will as well. Um, just one more part I totally forgot is that my mentor um, for my project, Ben Wan, who's the uh, director of Hudson Compost Services, he's a graduate of Hastings High School. Um, he he just graduated from or last year graduated from uh, the very selective business school or undergraduate business program at University of Southern California. He received the grant um, when he was my age, when he was in high school. Um, and so we have this kind of cool story of uh, a Marjo scholar um, coming, da- coming back to, to be a mentor and to um, you know, guide another student through this environmental science research process. And um, c- could you tell us a little bit about the, 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 uh, the study that you did and what you found? Yeah, absolutely. So I am in the process of, of seeing if the heat and the carbon dioxide uh, released by composting can be used to um, do what's called agricultural intensification, which is the process of making plants grow better, essentially. Um, what my project aims to do is create a what's called an aerated static pile composting system, which I right now I've built one in my backyard. It's basically a big box um, with uh, decaying organic waste in it. Um, so you kind of dump in your banana peels and your uh, food scraps, paper towels, anything that's organic you can put in there. Um, there's a bouncy house blower uh, connected to some PVC piping that I drilled holes in. Um, and that bouncy house blower uh, forces oxygen-rich air uh, into that bin with the uh, waste in it. Um, and that provides the oxygen that microorganisms need to break down that material and turn it into compost, the same kind of stuff that you can buy at Home Depot for your garden. It's a fantastic soil amendment. Um, it's, it's really valuable um, uh, in, in for a variety of um, purposes in gardens. Um, so I built the system that can do that. 
Uh, the trick is what re my research really is focusing on is um, putting a green greenhouse on top of that system. So essentially venting all the air um, and the steam that comes off of the compost um, as uh, these biological processes are happening and taking that and infusing a greenhouse um, with with all the carbon dioxide uh, coming on and, and the sort of rich um, water rich air this really good air that's coming off the compost and putting that into a greenhouse environment so that plants can take all that stuff and use it uh, to grow more quickly like more carbon dioxide means a better pho photosynthesis um, more water vapor means you have to water the plants less heat obviously means that you can extend the growing season and ideally uh, be able to, you know, grow tropical fruits and vegetables uh, in a climate like, you know, what we have here in the Northeast, um, where that might not otherwise be possible, where you might be needing to to truck in, um, you know, produce in the winter months or tropical produce even in the summer months. Um, and that obviously requires a ton of uh, carbon emissions to do all that shipping and trucking and, and flying. So it, the, the goal is to, to be able to facilitate uh, year-round agriculture using compost um, and eliminate some some carbon emissions in the process. Have you entered any other scientific competitions? So, uh, the real competition phase of the of the science research program happens in your senior year. So I'll be competing in uh, WESF, which is the Westchester Science and Engineering Fair, which feeds into uh, the International Science and Engineering Fair, which is run by Regeneron, which is actually based right here in um, Greenberg, right here in Greenberg. Um, yeah, so I'll be competing in, in that sort of the, the early stages of ISF, and depending on how well I do, I can make it to the international level. There's also um, JSHS, which is the Junior Science and Humanities Symposium, uh, which is sponsored by the Department of Defense. Um, and that is, uh, you know, I'll be competing in that as well. I think that's happening in March. Um, and then the third one uh, that I know I'll be competing in is the Regeneron Science Talent Search. Um, so, and that's a, that's a big competition run by Regeneron as well. Great. Um, uh, so we have to take another break. Uh, this is a little shorter. I'm Paul Feiner, Greenberg Town Supervisor, and we're talking uh, with Gus Renzen, um, who um, is a rising senior at Hastings High School, and I'm sure you're going to be uh, reading a lot about him in the future. If he wins a Nobel Prize, I'll probably put this uh, radio show on my resume. <laughs> so I'm Paul Feiner, Greenberg Town Supervisor. Back to the Greenberg Report on 1460 WVOX. Once again, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Hi, I'm Paul Feiner, uh, Greenberg uh, Town Supervisor, and my guest is uh, Gus Renzen. And Gus is a student at Hastings High School. He's going to be uh, entering his senior year, and he's already had many accomplishments that will make a lot of um, other students uh, jealous. Um, <laughs> You know, you were honored uh, when you were in sixth grade with the Martin Luther King Award. You just got a $5,000 grant. Uh, you're promoting, uh, you know, composting. Um, you're coming up with, you know, different systems. So you have a really impressive, you know, resume, and you're not even in college yet. Um, you're involved in uh, with a group of the Hudson Compost uh, Services. And um, that was star started, I think, by Ben... Um, Hunt Wang? Yeah, Ben Wan. Right. And um, and could you just tell us a little bit about that and why you got involved? Yes. Yeah, so um, HCS is a fantastic organization. Um, it was started, I, I'm going to get the year wrong, it was started three or four years ago um, by Ben Wan, uh, Jude Jorger, and Max Shapiro. Uh, ben had just, or was in his senior year, I believe, uh, and the undergraduate business program at USC at the Iovine and Young um, uh, sort of undergraduate business school. Um, and he partnered with Jude Jorger and Max Shapiro, who were seniors at Hastings High School at the time, to sort of start this composting company. Max and Jude had just graduated, or sorry, just finished um, AP Environmental Science with Ms. Shandroff, who is my science research teacher, who's amazing. Um, and they were sort of inspired by the composting process um, it's various applications, and they really wanted to bring 
composting to Hastings and really make it more accessible. Um, so they partnered with Ben, who was a friend of Max's older brother, to start this uh, composting company. And Ben brought all this business expertise, um, as well as sort of some really in-depth science knowledge and environmental science knowledge. Um, and so they decided that they were going to start uh, a curbside composting pickup service. So basically, um, uh, a company that will pick up your compost, provide you with all the um, you know equipment, the, the buckets, the indoor buckets, um, that you need to, to compost at home, and they will every week pick up all your compost and bring it to a facility uh, where it can be, um, you know, managed. And uh, it's actually could be less expensive because we in the town, we applied for a grant uh, for pickup of, um, you know, composting, and just the vehicles are hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. So this is... Uh, he, I think the charge is like five dollars. Five dollars to pick up about. Yeah, it's uh, five, yeah, five dollars a week. So it's it's very affordable. That's that's great. And how is that going? Uh, fantastic. So, um, HCS, I don't currently know the number of members. I haven't. It, it's constantly going up. It might be close to five, close to or over five hundred right now. Um, HCS is currently expanding into, um, you know, working with apartment buildings. Um, and trying to work out um, some relationships with businesses, um, as well as really focusing on the actual like sort of science behind composting, figure out, figuring out like how HCS um, can manage all this organic waste themselves, as opposed to taking it to a larger facility. Because obviously doing all that, all that trucking, taking um, compost uh, from, um, as good as it is to take it from households and bring it up to a facility, there are some emissions connected to that. So Right, uh, because it doesn't really make that much sense where people are feeling really great about their organic, um, you know, putting their food um, waste in a, in a bin, bringing it to say Anthony Veteran Park, and then being, it being shipped up to Ulster County because that uses a lot of gas too. Yeah, so HCS is, um, you know, it is a for-profit company, but it, its real mission is to, um, you know, do some good for the environment, do some real good for the world. So they're really, and we're really, really focused on, um, you know, minimizing emissions. Um, so yeah, folks, that's how I really got into HCS was Ben. I, I first started working with HCS because I was on the board of Project Share, which is a nonprofit uh, that works with the homeless that runs out of Hastings High School with Drew Jorger, um, who's one of the founders of HCS. I was on the track team with him as well. Um, and he sort of brought me into the company uh, to start doing some work with them. And that's how I met Ben. Ben encouraged me to take science research um, and to study composting more deeply so I could work with him to help, um, you know, design a, a facility uh, for HCS. Um, and that's how I got into science research. And I sort of fell in love with the scientific process, um, fell in love with, with the actual composting process, which is so interesting, um, and decided to, to, you know, design my own system. Um, ben became my mentor for the project, uh, and it resulted in me getting this $5,000 grant from the Marjoram Foundation and being able to you know, build the whole system in my backyard, and I'm testing it right now. Now, are you on the board of that group, or just a volunteer, or for Project Share? No, uh, for the uh, uh, Hudson Compost. Oh, for uh, no, I, I, so I, I work for HCS. I'm sort of like a long-term uh, intern, so I will run farmers markets uh, for HCS. Sometimes help out with pickups, um, and I. But my main thing is like research, so doing, you know, studying. Uh, studying the composting process, um, and then you know doing all this work with with aerated static pile composting to really so I can really help Ben um, when he gets to the point of deciding to build a facility. Uh, why is it so important for people to uh, um, compost their f food waste, and w uh, how come more people don't participate? I mean, should this be sort of like a tough love type of thing where you're where government is requiring everybody to um, recycle their food? Uh, <laughs> yes, I think yes. I think the answer is definitely yes. I don't think the number of reasons why composting is awesome would fit into an hour-long radio show. I can list a couple of them right now, though. Um, so the big thing is, is emissions, right? In a landfill, um, waste gets buried really deep, um, you know, under the ground so it doesn't smell, so it's not, like, gross and polluting everything. Um, the, the sort of drawback to that is that there's no oxygen for aerobic microorganisms to break down that organic waste. So what ends up happening is 
uh, it gets broken down through anaerobic processes that produce methane, which is an incredibly harmful greenhouse gas, um, significantly worse than carbon dioxide. And so let methane, uh, sorry, landfills are contributing to I, about, I think it's about 15, maybe 18 percent of total U.S. methane emissions, which is a significant amount um, that, that translates to a ton of uh, carbon dioxide um, and is significantly, you know, is having an impact on global warming. So composting, first and foremost, um, eliminates uh, those emissions by uh, reducing the amount of methane that's produced. Methane is not produced um, in aerobic composting unless it's done wrong. Um, because the compost is aerated, there's you know oxygen being provided to all those microorganisms, so there's no methane being produced. Um, the other thing is uh, composting produces this fantastic soil amendment, uh, which it's called compost. Um, so after all that sort of all those biological reactions are said and done, um, you've got this sort of fantastic, rich, brown, earthy stuff that you can put in your garden and that uh, improves soil health in a variety of ways. Um, Currently in the U.S., we're, we're facing a soil crisis. Uh, soil health is, uh, you know, declining steadily, and that's, you know, impacting the food supply. So having, you know, if the government were to implement uh, universal composting, that would uh, be awesome for soil because you'd have all this fantastic, um, it's not fertilizer, but it's, it's sort of like that. Like you'd have an enormous amount of fertilizer that you could use to sort of replenish soil across the country. Um, and the other, you know, big benefit to composting uh, is that it frankly makes your house cleaner. Um, I think a lot of the real drawback to comp people composting, people think it's sort of dirty, it's gross, it smells. Um, at least in my experience, we compost at home. It's way cleaner because you don't, in your trash can, you don't have any organic waste. So there's nothing that's going to rot. And you don't have to have as much garbage in your, um, you know, in the garbage pail. You know. Exactly. There's nothing. And there's nothing that goes bad. It's just like sort of, you know, plastic that you can't recycle and stuff. Um, so Plus you, also for a local government... Um, they would, it would say if everybody participated, we would have so much less uh, pickup yeah. that would be needed. You could easily do one day a week for communities that do two day a week garbage because the amount of garbage that would be uh, picked up every week would be so much less. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, my, my research is focusing on sort of harnessing another huge benefit of composting. Uh, which is the heat and the carbon, the the good carbon dioxide that it releases. So, com um, compost has actually been proven to be a renewable energy source. There was this fantastic study done at the Deer Dykes composting facility in Scotland uh, that proved you could, you know, do spatial heating just using the heat generated by composting. Um, in aerobic composting systems, temperatures can get up to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, my composting system that I built, I think we hit about 145. Um, so you can use all that heat to heat buildings. What I'm trying to prove is that you can use it to heat greenhouses um, and essentially make greenhouses work better by uh, you know, raising CO2 levels, um, which can help plants to, to, to grow faster and bear more fruit. Uh, there's a study uh, in China that proved that with uh, what's called aerobic fermentation, um, which is a process similar to composting. Basically, if you raise CO2 levels in a greenhouse, uh, Plants like have more food to do photosynthesis um, and can sort of build up more mass. That is really great. Um, you know, you are have a very impressive background and are uh, so intelligent. And I'm wondering if your parents um, are in the field. You know, uh, did you sort of get like a little bit of a head start because your parents are also very smart? Or uh, my parents are very smart. They are not in the field. My dad. Uh, they're both lawyers. My dad was a federal prosecutor for a long time. Uh, he does internal investigations at HSBC right now, and my mom is the chief legal officer at FanDuel, um, the the sports betting company. Um, so no, they're not scientists. They were like, "Oh my god, this is gonna be so gross. We're gonna have a bunch of like garbage rotting in our backyard." And it was a, the, the biggest hurdle I think was convincing them to do it. But now it's working, which is so exciting. Great. I'm Paul Fine, a Greenberg Town Supervisor, and we'll be right back with Gus Renzen, and he's a Hastings High School law student. Thanks. Now, back to the Greenberg Report on 1460 WVOX. Once again, here's Greenberg Town Supervisor Paul Feiner. Hey, I'm Paul Feiner. I'm uh, the Greenberg Town Supervisor. I'm interviewing uh, Gus Renzen. Uh, Hastings High School, um, uh, soon to be uh, um, 
senior, and um, he um, has won some awards, has focused on the importance of um, uh, composting uh, food waste, um, and is also involved with the Hudson Compost Services. Do you know how people sign up for that or learn more information? Yes. Yeah, so there are a sort of variety of avenues you can take to sign up for uh, you know, curbside compost pickup through HCS. Uh, first and foremost, sort of the easiest way is to go to uh, hudsoncompost.org. Um, you can sign up right on the website. Uh, there's a sign up button. If you click it, uh, um, it'll take you to a, a page where you can enter your um, you know, credit card information. Uh, and then the next, you know, you, you fill that out, you click a button, and then uh, that next week we'll drop off your, your bucket and you can start composting. So it's super easy that way. We've also got um, representatives at the Hastings Farmers Market, the Irvington Farmers Market, uh, and the Terrytown Farmers Market that are there uh, every weekend. Um, so anyone there, and sometimes it'll be me, uh, will be happy to talk to you about the composting process, um, how HCS, uh, you know, sort of manages composting and, uh, you know, supplies you with all the equipment you need to make composting easy and hassle-free. Um, and then, you know, a- another option uh, is to, you know, reach out to, if you have more questions, reach out to, uh, you know, somebody on the HCS team. So if you go to the website, you can uh, go to the, the sort of contact us page. You could reach out to Ben at HudsonCompost.org, who's the uh, director of the um of the company, and he'd love to speak with with any potential customers or organizations that like to work with HDS. Um, so yeah, it's super duper accessible. Um, definitely would recommend uh, starting composting uh, if you don't right now. If you're an organization, um, you know, sort of thinking about it, maybe a partnership, doing some more composting. Um, definitely, definitely a great idea. Um, I compost at home personally. We started it last year when I joined HDS. It's been fantastic, and it's not that hard. It's so easy, frankly. I think it makes. Um, it has been a net, it has made it easier, sort of regular trash stuff easier than before. It's kept everything really clean. Um, it's reduced the amount of trash that we have. Uh, and it's sort of exciting to know that you don't, you know, you're, you're minimizing your, uh, you know, negative impact on the environment uh, and doing something sort of, sort of great for soil so, health. And so basically and what people have to do, let's say you have a banana and you don't finish it or you have a banana peel, you just put it in the, uh, the bin. Yeah, uh, so you, yeah. Exactly. There's an indoor in kitchen bin uh, that's sort of a smaller one. It's got a little uh, like little comp- compostable trash bag uh, compost liner in it. Um, and yeah, you've got a banana peel, you've got uh, coffee filters, you've got dirty paper towels, um, meter dairy scraps. Uh, you just chuck that right in that bin. You could I, use a dirty paper towel. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it, it's it's organic material. It comes from trees. Uh, it can be broken down in the composting process, which is really exciting. HGS pr- provides customers with all the material they need to know what you can put what in. What about like bones in. from meat? Yep. Cooking oils can go in there. Um, anything that if it was once uh, alive can be composted. That is great, and it's easy, and it's good for uh, the environment. Um, and it basically, if you sign up, it's about $5. $5 a week. Um, but I think it I, right now we're doing a... I, if you sign up at a farmer's market, I believe it's a, it's a one month or two week uh, free trial. So you can just try out composting, see if it uh, works for you. And if not, um, no harm, no foul. There's no, you don't have to pay anything, which is awesome. Um, uh, yeah, it's $5 pickup. And I think there's sort of discounts depending on how long you sign up. The monthly plan versus the annual, it can get cheaper than that. That's, that is uh, great. When you go to the farmer's markets, uh, do people sign up? Yes. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, I've, I don't think I've ever been to a farmer's market where we don't have somebody signing up. I think um, so many people in the Greenberg area are doing it now um, that we've sort of got, uh, like, especially at farmer's markets, since there's so many people that come back so frequently, there's some saturation. So it's, it's slowed down a little bit just because, you know, we'll see people and they'll be waving like, we, we love compost, we love HDS, but we're already signed up. Um, so I think it's, it's really about, and Ben is working on this right now, reaching out to people, um, potential customers in other ways. But yeah, we've done, you know, interest is growing, it's snowballing. Um, it's a really exciting time to be in the compost business. But it really takes like a long time to get people uh, used to this. Um, frankly, I don't think it does. People that start composting um, tend to get comfortable with it pretty quickly, like in a week I'm, or two. But I'm talking oh, about the, so to get the into average the person. The average person. Yeah. Like the average person probably to is To go not from gonna... trash to composting? Right. Um, 
I haven't seen that. Actually, I think people, it's, it's a pretty easy switch. I think getting over the hump to, you know, be willing to test it out, um, just because there's all this sort of, there's the stigma of composting being um, like dirty or unclean when really it's, it's a cleaner process than just throwing all your, your trash in the garbage can and leaving it there for a week to kind of rot inside your house as opposed to taking it outside in an airtight bin um, where it's, it's not going to stink anything up. Um, Does the Hastings schools um, uh, use uh, compost, food composting in the cafeterias? Um, I think we had a program a couple years ago. It might have fizzled out. I think the environmental club I know is working really hard to bring that back. Um, and there's definitely, we do, we do recycle, um, and I think we, we do do some compost. Like we have a uh, sort of school garden that I think uses some compost, but I, there's definitely room to do more composting in the school. And I think HCS and I am uh, working really hard on making sure that we get that in. I'm also the uh, I work with. I'm the student liaison of the board of education, so I've been speaking with them about trying to get more composting involved in the. And uh, that the actually would make a, a lot of sense if we could get students in all the school districts to really promote, you know, uh, composting, and you know, even at the third grade, fourth grade levels, then they'll tell their parents, and the teachers actually should be um, requiring students to. Uh, do projects on how it works in their house and then people will get used to it. Yeah, so we're definitely working on uh, like outreach for, for schools right now. Um, and yeah, that's, a, that's an awesome way to, to sort of reach out to new families and also to educate um, you know, kids and sort of the, the, the future American population about how awesome composting is. Um, so if we sort of get kids from an early age interested in the process, interested in um, you know, reducing their, their uh, carbon footprint, um, interested in, you know, sort of maintaining, uh, you know, ecological balance and soil health. Um, I think there's, there's only, only good stuff that can come with that. Right. Um, um, you know, you've done a lot and you're not even in college yet. Do you, uh, want to run for office at some point in your life? Could you see yourself being, um, a congressman or a senator or a governor or, yeah, maybe. Um, I'm super interested in, in, in government. Uh, the idea, especially, you know, watching the news right now, uh, politics seems like it's, it's pretty divisive. But I think, um, you know, we definitely, we definitely need some, some, you know, good people my age sort of um, that are, that are going to want to go and do that stuff. I'm not, not sure yet if that's me, um, but I definitely want to do something, uh, you know, that, that service. I, I'm not sure if that would be running for office or, or working in government. Um, I'm considering doing ROTC in college um, or like, you know, being a teach something like that. I don't know. I want to do something that's helping people, but I'm not sure um, what is the most effective way to do that. But that's that's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Well, I think I mentioned to you maybe during the break or early in the program that my first campaign manager was Phil Weiser, um, who graduated Hastings High School. And now he and then he clerked for Justice Ginsburg on the U.S. Supreme wow. Court. Um, and, um, now he's, um, then he moved to Colorado. Now he's the attorney general of, uh, the state of Colorado, yeah. probably be governor, uh, um, in the, in the next five, 10 years or whatever. But, um, you know, I was always like impressed with him. Uh, do you, I say so you, are you optimistic about the future of the country? Um, yes, of course I am. I think, um, you know that's that's America. That's optimism. It's it's about you know the promise of uh, a better future. I think that in spite of all the the challenges we're facing right now, in spite of the polarization, I think um, there's a there's a real chance for some really positive change in the future. That's great. So uh, good luck. I'll follow your career uh, with the greatest of interest, and thank you for all you've done and for making a difference in the lives of uh, many people. Thanks for having me, Supervisor. I'm Paul Feiner, Greenberg Town Supervisor.